Last thing we want to do is strip this stuff out. Oh, gosh darn it. Just broke the- Hey, welcome back to Freem's Garage. Today we are working on the brakes on our abandoned 1962 AMC Rambler Classic Deluxe Trim Package. We're working hard to get this car back on the road for the first time since 1975. And the last time we worked on this car together, we worked on the cooling system. And I'd love to finish the cooling system work with you right here, right now but we're waiting on parts. So that's why we're working on the brakes today. And the car's outside, so let's use our garage floor mounted winch to winch the car inside Freeman's garage here and let's get to work. If you've watched all the videos here on Freeman's Garage with this 62 Rambler, which I'm sure you have, hint, hint, wink, wink, they're all linked below in the video description. After you watch this video, you can go thumb through those and watch more. But if you've seen them all, which I'm sure you have, you may have noticed that we have never even, I mean, even accidentally bumped our foot on the brake pedal in this car. So let's start by pushing on the brake pedal and see if it just goes to the floor or what because the goal here today is to find out if the brakes work and if they do work we'll make sure that they're good and safe and if they don't work we'll try to fix them in this video. And if we don't have the entire brake system functioning flawlessly by the end of this video. You know, maybe maybe we're gonna have to order some parts or something. That's fine. Either way, we'll be knocking out some work on this car that we gotta get done no matter what anyways if we're ever going to return the car back to the road. In fact, I don't think we've ever even sat down on the seat in this car yet. And what's cool is this car has what's called airline or recliner seats. It basically turns into a bed back here. And in a previous video with this car, we were trying to figure out how the seats work. We got them back to this point, and I think that we weren't able to get the uh, passenger side door open. I think that was a deal. You have to go back and watch that video or rewatch it. So let's sit down in here for the first time ever, and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when we push down on the brake pedal. I don't really mind sitting in poisonous insect filled cars. But if you could see this seat, you'd understand that it's pretty much just like sitting right in the nest, if you know what I mean. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, the pedal moved. That's good. That, that's a very good sign. There's obviously no brake fluid in the system. But the fact that the pedal actually does go back and forth tells us that our master cylinder is most likely not seized, which is very good. Because if you're going to find an original one, or rebuild an original one. You know, you're looking at most likely re-sleeving it and you know, sourcing that type of a part, a master cylinder for this car. It's um, it's it's not like uh, going into the local auto parts store. You know what I mean? It's not that easy. Well, let's get the hood open. And let's take a peek at the master cylinder. I think that's the next step here. 
And after that, we'll be jacking the car up and taking the wheels and tires off. Our master cylinder is a Bendix unit. And you can see it even says Bendix right there on the side. Now, if it was not a Bendix, it would be a Delco. And the thing about 62 is 62 is a one-off year for the master cylinder. It's possible that we could get as lucky as just having to put fluid in the system and bleeding the brakes and everything's going to work just fine. And But before we pop the caps off our master cylinder, let's do a visual inspection and, you know, confirm that we actually have all our brake lines here. We look good up here. Let's look look across that way. See, it's these guys right here coming across here. Now, don't forget, we got we got a brake line, a hard line over here going down in there, and it goes right right where my fingertip is right there, and that goes to the left front. But these over here, you're going to have that one there going to our right front. And then the hard line that ducks down, this one here, that's going to go to the back of the car and then split to each side at the back. This car sits really low, so it's kind of difficult to get your... Uh, head tucked them up there, can't talk, up into each corner and get your uh, eyeballs on the brake line. So let's go ahead and just jack the car up right now and get the wheels and tires off so we can see what the heck we're looking at. If you were buying tools at Sears in the 70s, you might recognize these jack stands. It'd be nice if this curb was not here. But it tis what it tis. We are not centered. See, the thing is, these cars, you know, this car is a unibody car. So, we don't want to just, well, we need to be careful about where we place the jack. We want to be somewhere like the engine cross member where we're at right now. We don't want to just stick it, you know, anywhere underneath because we don't have a, you know, we don't have a, a frame that's separate from the body because of it being a unibody car. You know, we don't want to put the floor jack through the floorboard or you know, or even, you know, uh, crease the rocker panel or anything because we might not ever be able to fix that. All right, let's take a look. Okay, we can keep going. Just want to make sure we don't damage the car. If anything bad were to happen to this car, I'd be devastated. Okay, great. Now place your bets in the comments on if I'm going to trip on this or not. Probably will.
I'm sorry. We're a little tippy here, and I don't have any extra or free jack stands to put under the front here to stabilize us up because they're all underneath this car. So we'll go ahead and stop right there. We'll just leave this left front on here for now. And we'll just continue what we're doing. We'll just leave that on for the moment. The rubber line and everything is present here on the right front. On the right rear here, I see the parking brake cable is hooked up. That's good. We're not concerned about that right now, but it's nice to see. Our rubber hose is here and then splits into our steel lines. And the steel line coming to the right rear is all hooked up. Feels pretty solid too. I think we got pretty good metal lines. I wouldn't be too surprised if we pop a hole in one of the steel lines though or the rubber hoses. It's always smart to replace those rubber hoses though. Alright, parking brake cable over here too. Looks like it's in good shape. Steel line is intact over here as well and hooked up. These brake lines on this car look like they're probably going to be usable. I'm hoping they hold up and don't give us any trouble. Alright. Everything's hooked up on the left front as well. Alrighty then. Let's get the caps off the master cylinder and see what it looks like in here. Yep, not doing that with the bare paws. Here we go. Easy does it. These caps are a little bit brittle. Kind of a kind of a hard well kind of like a, a rubbery plasticky type material. SC heavy duty. Oh, S-E, what? S-E. It says, use heavy duty S-A-E brake fluid. Well, that don't look too dirty. It's a good sign. Oh, maybe it is a little Joe Dierte in here. All right, please don't break. Please don't break. I'm paranoid I'm going to break this. There we go. That's better. There we go. I don't want to hurt you. I just want to talk to you. See what we got going on in here. Ooh, that looks pretty clean from what I can see. That's a good sign. Very good sign. Wow, I can't believe how clean that is in there. I wonder if somebody drained the brake fluid out of this car before they parked it. 
And you see how clean that is in this master cylinder? Wow. I feel like I won a million dollars in Las Vegas and I need to walk away right now. Let's get some of this crusty stuff away from the holes there. So that way we don't knock the stuff in there. And let's put some brake fluid in this thing and uh, let's just keep going. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Uh, you know, we'll go Fennel. We'll go with the Fennel if we can find one. They say don't go upon Wolverton Mountain. The master cylinder is full. Now let's start pushing the pedal in. Just see what happens if we try to start pumping this through the system. I'll tell you what, I'll get in the car, I'll push the pedal, and then you watch the master cylinder out here and uh, see if there's any bubble action or I don't know any kind of pumpage action and I'll let you know what the pedal feels like. I'm pushing the pedal down slowly and it feels like there is some resistance. Well, a little bit. Yeah, that's freaking sweet man. That's a good sign. It's good news. Let's pop the brake drum off each corner now and ensure that we actually have the brake parts in there. We might be missing springs and whatnot. Who knows? And if that all goes well, then I say we partake in a little bit of uh, gravity bleeding. I'm starting to recall now that a while back in a video over on the Freeman's Garage extra channel. We took the brake drum off this right rear corner here because the brakes were locked up and we needed to pop this corner apart just to free it up so that we could actually roll the car in and out of Freeman's garage nice and easily. And I'm remembering now that in that video there were some creepy crawlies back here that we left. A scorpion and some rat tarantula looking thing. Yep, that sure is a scorpion, all right. And, uh, yeah, I have no clue what that thing is. But, yep, all the parts are here. I, I remember looking at this corner. And this stuff could use some cleaning, but it's good enough for this car to go out on a test drive so I think we're good with this. We'll just go ahead and pop it back on, leave the scorpion and everything in there. Test drive ready. Alrighty, I'm hoping this drum comes off nice and easy. I hope it doesn't turn into me sitting in here sitting on this corner here for an hour and a half beating the carnation out of it. Just poke myself with something. Yes, it's coming off. Or is it? It just broke the brake drum. Look at that. 
broke it. This all looks great over here on this side too. Everything's complete. Absolutely 100% complete and looks good. We'll spray, we'll spray the brake shoes off and then set the drum out with some brake cleaner real quick just to help the drum go back on easier. Popping this little rubber plug out of the back of the backing plate for the brakes so that we can get a uh, brake spoon in here and loosen up the adjuster that'll help us get this drum off. Everything is here up on the right front as well, so that's good. Um, we might have some wheel cylinder issues, possibly, maybe. Hopefully not, but that's good enough for our test drive, and the test drive will be in a safe location, so don't you fret, Fraulein. And before a real drive, you know, we will repack these wheel bearings, etc. But that is a okay for a little test drive. This brake drum is in really, really good condition, too. So that is good. We're going to throw this right front tire back on before we take the. Uh, left front tire off just in case you know because this front end is so tipsy and the wood blocks are split if they completely break in half the car is going to drop so well uh have at least one tire on up front here. Oh, there's another scorpion in here. Nothing I want to mess with. I will just leave it alone. Everything looks nice and complete here too. In great shape. We bumped the spring off though. And I do you remember on the other side? Did this did that go in there? How did that go? I don't remember. <laughs> well, we kind of need to figure that out right now. Well, I'm positive that this end here went into there. Or that's where it's supposed to go. But the thing is, okay, if we put that there where that goes, I don't think we... I don't think we're going to reach.
Oh wait, hold on here. Okay, what if we put that into there? And then now can we get this up here? Um hmm. Let's see. What if we grab this grab this screwdriver here? Well, you know, we, we have proper tools for this. All right, I got the proper tool ski. Let's hook that back into there. Okay. And then we'll grab that. Come on now. Oh, come on. I don't want to put a ton of pressure on this because it's not really a spring, you know? A, a spring, you know? So, yeah, I just want to be careful. I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it. Here, the screwdriver is a lot thinner. There we go. Aha! Now that is how we do it, my friend. Have you noticed the brake shoes are in great shape on this car? Look at all that life left on them. Man, we are going to be driving this car around with brake shoes that are at least... Well, the car is parked in 75 according to plates, to the plates, so... The brake shoes are at least that old. All right, it's time to gravity bleed our brake system here. That's how we're going to get the air out of the system. Now we could do the, you know, traditional brake bleeding process where you pump the pedal hold it down when it's firm, and then you crack the bleeder at each corner, one corner at a time, starting from the corner furthest away from the master cylinder and working your way around. Uh, we can't do that because, yes, I do have the strength of two men, but I can only be in one place at a time. So that's why we're going to go with gravity bleeding. And in order to gravity bleeder system here, we will make sure that we're topped off with fluid and I just spilt it all over the place. Don't ever get brake fluid on your uh, paint because it will absolutely destroy it. I'll just set this down on the floor so that I can kick it over later. All right, we're going to crack the bleeder on all four corners. And we're just going to let it bleed, man. We're just going to let gravite do the work, eh? The bleeder is cracked on all four corners. The master cylinder is full. There is a thing called bench bleeding that we could have done to this master cylinder in or out of the car before starting our gravity bleed procedure that would be very helpful but eh, possibly not necessary in this situation. We're really just trying to get fluid, brake fluid, to each of the four corners right now to let us know that we don't have clogged or restricted lines and we can check for leaks and we just want to get good enough here for a test drive coming up in a future video and don't worry the test drive will be a professional driver on a closed course. So all we do now is just wait until we've got brake fluid coming out of each corner and 
we will keep an eye on our master cylinder once we start seeing, you know, some fluid coming out. We don't want to let it run dry, so we want to make sure we add if we need to and do that until the fluid's coming out of all four corners. And then we are going to start closing the bleeders and we will do the left front first and then the right front and then the left rear and then the right rear. But yeah, so for right now, the uh, only thing to do is wait. It's the next day and Surprise, surprise, nothing happened. Not a drip, not a drop, which means cloggage. You can see we are still filled to the top with brake fluid. And it's pretty interesting how, you see how the, the master cylinder looks wet all over here? You know, it's, as if the brake fluid has permeated, is that the word? Permeated? Soaked through the uh, cast iron. Or did we spill brake fluid all over the place yesterday? I don't remember, did we? Probably. Well, let's push down on the old brake pedal and maybe there's just a small or very light clog somewhere in the system here and we can just push it through it's possible now the thing is with pushing the brake pedal down is that if we push the pedal down and we push fluid out of the lines when we take our foot off the pedal we will be pulling air into the lines because remember the bleeders are cracked open on all four corners. If we push the brake pedal down and push fluid through and air out and there was a second person here to close those bleeders then when you take your foot off the pedal you wouldn't be pulling air back in but since we're by ourselves that's what's going to happen when we push the pedal but we're just trying to see if we could, if we can just get something moving because, well, we just need to get fluid moving through the lines. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is let's push the brake pedal down. Now I'm pushing it down kind of slowly just because if we hammer on it, we'll just shoot fluid out of the uh, reservoir and all over the place. So we'll do this a few times. See, just what we were talking about a second ago, if you think about that, and then look at what we're doing now. Okay, we're pushing out, you know, forcing air out. But because those bleeders are open, that just sucks air right back in. But as I always say, Freeman's Garage videos are not how-to videos. Still got nothing happening. Maybe the bleeders are clogged. Well, let's take this left front one out all the way and look at it. Yeah, yeah it looks kind of clogged up, doesn't it? Let's just keep this out and let's push the pedal and see if we can get anything to come out of the left front. We got nothing going on here and that's pretty much what I thought was going to happen. So let's back up a second here and think about this. Our goal here today with the Rambler is to find out is our brake system in working order 
does it just need to be bled and it's it's good to go or does it need some work and we've discovered that it's not working it does need work so since that's the case and you know I don't like to guess I like to find out let's go straight to the source the very heart of this braking system where everything begins the source of the Nile the master cylinder let's pop off our steel lines and see if we can even push fluid through and out of the master cylinder because if the master cylinder is not working if we need to you know if it needs more than just bleeding the air out of it if it needs to be rebuilt you know resleeved completely replaced then that means we might as well replace just about well we might as well do wheel cylinders and all that stuff too in the brake system which would mean we're you know we got to order all these parts it's going to take time to get all that stuff and uh, it's going to be more cool work that we get to do so let's pop these lines off and see what's going on here let's get some lube on here to uh reduce the chances of us stripping things out and ruining things. And this is going to make a little bit of a oily mess, but it's the price we got to pay right now. Sweet care align. Blah, blah, blah. I'm flattening this rag out here that's over the carburetor so that, uh, you know, I don't restrict your view of these uh, lines getting loosened up. You wouldn't want to miss that. All right, these lines look like a 3 eighths and a 7 sixteenths. So this line wrench here will work perfect. Should. Well, oh, come on now. There we go. Last thing, last thing we want to do is strip this stuff out. Oh, nice. I thought that was going to give us a lot of trouble and it didn't. I'm going to work this back and forth a little bit and put a little bit more lube in there just to help keep from stripping this out. We're also going to try not to Spill brake fluid all over the place as well. As much as we can help it anyways. There's only so much, you know, it's like, it's like world hunger. There's only so much we can do. Hmm. I still feel like we are about to break this line. And you know what, if we break this line here, I think we're just gonna just bend all new brake lines by hand for this car. Oh, it's breaking, isn't it? Oh, gosh darn it. Yep. Well, might as well just break it off now because Oh yeah, so it never actually so it, yeah, oh boy, okay, yeah. So the fitting did loosen up easily, like I thought a minute ago, but I didn't realize that the brake line was rusted to the fitting, which I knew better. So that's broke. So we're doing brake lines no matter what on this car now. <laughs> Which is cool, I like bending brake lines. It's gonna be a little bit complicated on this car because we got all these curve roos back here. But, you know, go big or go home, right? Let's go to the 7 16th side of the wrench. Yeah, see this one. This one's just going to break too. Let's just stop right here and see if we can force any 
glue it out of the front. Anything coming out? If you can see. Okay. So watch right here. And let me know if anything comes out. Uh, yeah. I think we're rebuilding the entire brake system. You know what I mean? Nothing on this entire brake system is working. The master cylinder is not working properly. We broke a steel line. The rubber lines are probably swollen up and closed. That's why you no know, fluid is getting to any one of the four corners. And the wheel cylinders could be, uh, you know, clogged up too. It was definitely worth making this video for you today because now we know what we got to do. So I'm thinking in a future video, we'll take all the brake stuff off and we will um, clean up or rebuild the master cylinder. We got we to gotta dig into it. Same thing with those wheel cylinders. They might just need to be taken apart and cleaned or we'll rebuild them, the original wheel cylinders, but we're definitely gonna be bending and running brand new steel lines and we're just gonna do brand new uh, rubber hoses. But our brake shoes and all the springs and bell cranks and rods and whatnot on all four corners are all that's good. It's just the hydraulic components that we need. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where this brake adventure takes us because as we know, you can't, you're not just getting one, a master cylinder from a Willys. You're rebuilding it yourself, re-sleeving it, or, you know, figuring something out outside the box. You know what I mean? But that's a big job and it's going to require some researching and some part sourcing. So before we get into rebuilding the brake system, we know what we got to do now. We know how the situation of everything, so that's huge. That really needed to get done. But before we rebuild everything, we're going to finish the cooling system here because our is going to be here any day. And we've got some AMC 196 specific factory specified engine maintenance tasks as well that we need to perform on this girl. Anyways, you know I appreciate you liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing with friends and family. And also watching more videos. I got a couple up here on the screen. You can pick one and watch next. A light clog or restriction... Rest